Zoom master. Is Heidi in the room? Yes. I, I see you, Heidi. <laughs> awesome. So your camera is working. Let's check your mic. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Fantastic. Now, last thing is, can you see the timer? Yes. Okay. We will proceed with the contest then. Heidi Lee. Heidi Lee. Thank you, Madam Contest Chair, my fellow Toastmaster, and especially Kathleen. Your title of your speech, I Love You Emotion, Draw Attention. So right before you even open your mouth, I'm already curious about your speech. I totally enjoy your speech. Why? Because I'm the same as you. Being an Asian, you know that the culture to talk about love or express our love is very subtle. So your speech is very close to my heart. I really, really enjoy it. And let me tell you, what is the things that work well for me in your speech? The most important thing is your speech is very conversational. It's like you're talking to your best friend. You tell them about your childhood about the relationship you and your dad and is um, very sincere because your tone of voice expressed us. You are very calm demeanor. You are a good storyteller. And also in the conclusion, you ask us if we can relate to the one that we love or the ones who love us. How do you find those love how do you find that spot? Even maybe they don't express that. So it's a good con conclusion. I love it very much. And I think the way to make it even better, here are some suggestions from me. First of all, your pausing is very good, but I think you can dramatize it to make it more exciting by giving half a bit longer pause and also your facial expression can be more expressive in your eye context or your smile. It's like when you find that he really loves you and you are very excited and you feel a lot of love, that kind of things. And then I think you can use your space more because you basically station in one place. Instead of uh, maybe you can move from one side to another side when you change your story from your three years old to seven years old. And also use more depth of the space. Move more backward from three years old and move closer to seven years old and then move closer to nowadays. And one last thing, I think I would suggest anyone who give a speech not using virtual background because you use a lot of hand gesture and sometimes your finger disappear because of the virtual background. So it's kind of distracting. But in conclusion, I love your speech, conversational style, very friendly, and just a few things to express more about your emotion to make it more exciting. And thank you very much, Kathleen, for your speech. Madam Contest Chair. Okay, thank you, timer. Zoom master, or should I just say, Wayne, are you in the room? We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you still. Okay. Now we can hear you. Perfect. Can you see the timer? Yes, I can. Perfect. We shall proceed then. Wayne, good. Wayne, good. There have been so many people in my life who have expressed their love by putting it in motion more than they have with the words they said. Madam Toastmaster, Catherine, friends, 
what I'm going to do for the next two to three minutes is help us all learn something from Catherine's speech. I'll point out some things she did very well so that we can apply those in our speeches and then offer a few suggestions on how she and we can improve our speeches. I like that you started with an attention getting opening. You had us right from the beginning and pulled us in. And this is an emotional story and it can be difficult to get emotions across, but you did it exactly the way you should. Instead of just telling us the attributes of your father or just telling us how you felt about them, you told stories that showed his attributes and showed us how you felt about them. Our brains are wired to connect with stories about people. So you chose an effective way to do that. And I think we were all drawn in and we felt what you felt instead of just knowing it intellectually. Another thing you did well was gestures. Now on Zoom, the problem is that if you gesture like you might normally do, they aren't seen. But most of the time when you gestured, you raised your hands a little higher than you normally would to keep them in the view of the camera. That's good. You also had good eye contact by looking at the camera. Occasionally, you do what I do sometimes, you look off while remembering the point, but overall it was excellent eye contact. Some of the best examples of this were the first thing you did by pointing to the camera and saying, Wayne, we've lost your audio. We can give him uh, halfway through to restart if possible with audio difficulties. They have to start halfway through of where they left off technically if the like, Wi-Fi went down or audio went down. Well, you know, I don't know if it helps, but it sounded like your volume went progressively lower, like like your mic pickup got reduced somehow. But you didn't go on mute. It just your the volume just got softer yeah. and softer until you went gone. Wayne, okay. please Is do a mic check now again. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay not really loudly is anybody else uh marshall or nick can you comment on that it is low it's your your volume is very low wayne how about this is this any better it is not hmm. but we can hear you timer i will ask you to restart the time at actually i'm going to ask for jason's input on this does she start where, where does she restart the timing at Normal rules, I think, are once the Wi-Fi went down, they can just continue where they left off, not to completely restart, I believe. So I would ask Chief Judge for that, please, Marshall. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, can he start halfway through as as if the Wi-Fi went out or the audio went out? Yeah. And what? so what does the timer now use as benchmarks? I would say after the one minute mark, I believe. So she she, should be holding it up. Went down, it went down. This, this is Joyce. Joyce. It, it went, went down, down on my my side about one minute. Okay. So he will need to start at one minute and thirty seconds. So at that would be the middle of the speech, regardless of where he was at when he dropped out. So when he gets to one minute, he gets the green card. One and a half would be yellow and two would be the red, correct? 30 seconds will be green, one minute will be yellow, and 130 will be red, I believe. That I believe is that. correct. 
I believe that's correct. Yes. It's green at, normally it's green at two, yellow at two and a half, and red at three. But we have to cut it by one minute. So one minute, be, 30 seconds. So it would be one minute, one thirty, and two minutes with 30 seconds to finish. No, it'll be green light at 30, yellow light at one minute, red light at one thirty, with 30 seconds to finish. And we need to do another mic check because I we saw did. Wayne talking. And well, just after that mic check, he started talking again and we I didn't hear anything. I noticed the same thing. Wayne, please speak. We cannot hear you. I'm Timer, guessing are there you is, clear? I'm guessing there is a um something that's automatically reducing it's thinking that his voice is background noise for some reason maybe we cannot hear you wayne he needs because to go in under his mic when you click the little carrot that goes up you can go in there and test your microphone for volume and things background noise things like that maybe he has something else open that's damping his microphone settings if he has multiple applications open, that does happen. If you're using an external microphone, maybe unplug your external microphone and use your computer microphone, whatever option you get, or uh, try to unplug it and plug it back in and see what pump, uh, comes up on the Zoom microphone settings what you can use, what the select microphone is. We are not hearing you, Wayne. Do you know how to test your mic settings? Yes. Now we hear you. Okay. Loud and clear. All right. Recommend staying with your... <laughs> No, I shouldn't make that recommendation. I'm sorry. Okay. So, so Tyner, are you my, in my evaluation, um, what uh, did you see? I talked about gestures and then I was going to talk about the virtual background. If I... Well, you will need to time it accordingly. Essentially, here is your time frame. You, uh, the green card will come up in 30 seconds. Okay. The yellow card will come up at one minute and the red card will come up at one minute, 30 seconds and you will have a 30 second grace period. Okay, and I'll just try to, I guess, estimate which part y'all had heard. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna announce our evaluator so you know when to start. Wayne, good. Wayne, good. Catherine, as I mentioned, you did a good job of using stories to tell us about your father and your emotions. And you had good gestures, raising them a little bit higher because this is Zoom and we can't always see them. You did a good job of eye contact, keeping your eyes on the camera most of the time. A few suggestions I have. You had a virtual background that was a bit distracting. The one thing to keep in mind is everything should really be about the speech, including the uh, visual aids. And that's what the background is. So the one you had about Toastmasters wasn't telling us the same thing as your speech was. So you might want to consider just using a plain background to not distract us. You had a good strong voice and you mostly spoke soft and slow, which is correct for the type of speech you were giving. However, if you vary that, I think you could get some more impact. When your finger got caught in the door, you could be loud saying it hurt. And then soft, telling us how your father cried or speak fast when you're excited about the bike and then slow down to tell us how your father repaired a bike. These sorts of things would make both parts of the speech pop and help us remember that. Also, you could use the stage a little bit more. It's kind of hard to do in a Zoom speech, but one thing you can do with the, you can only do with a wide angle camera is if you just take a step back, you have space here, in here, you could tell us the story and then come up and fill the screen to give us the point. 
So I think you had a great speech. And what I particularly liked is that I lost my father earlier this year. And in listening to your speech, it helped me finally remember him. And I think that was the case for a lot of people in the audience. Madam Contestman. Is Tanya in the room? And I see her. Perfect. Your camera is working. Can you please say something to test your mic for us? Hello, Laura. That works beautifully. And how about can you see the timer? Yes, ma'am. We will proceed with the contest then. Tanya Latham, Tanya Latham. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, we were in the presence of a master this morning. Catherine walked us through not only a well-prepared speech, but an emotional speech that gave us examples of how we can continue forward. Did you notice throughout her speech about motion that she wove in references to transportation? In the very first point, she talked about a car slamming her finger. In the second point, she brought in her father's tow truck and then her very own bicycle. The third point, you may not have caught it as much, but it was the sound of her own feet walking away from her dad. Those are great examples that we can use and continue to grow, especially when we're thinking about how to weave an underlying theme into what we do. Now, Catherine's whole focus was the emotion that her father hid in his motions. As Catherine's continuing to grow, these are things that we can do as we continue to add some motions also. One thing that I caught was when that teenager was stepping away from her father because he wouldn't hug anymore. What about an example of a hug in motion at that moment? What about that snarly teenager face or voice? that could have had that impact at that moment. Those are great pieces that will help that presentation by Catherine continue to rise, continue to grow, continue to even get stronger, which is what we're all looking for. Another piece there is some more pauses. While we're talking about motion and action, those moments of standing still can have some of the best impact. One of the first examples that I noticed could have been right there at the beginning where there was a section where he never showed it. To me, instead of ramming those words together, perhaps separate them so that that emotional impact becomes stronger for just that second. The best part of what Catherine shared with us today was that final call to action. Or, as I'm rephrasing it today, a call to motion. We want that in what we give out there. Rather than dumping information, Catherine inspired. Catherine helped us find a way to move forward. So as you're climbing today, as Catherine's continuing to expand and move into motion, we all can travel together. Contest chair.